Hey guys, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. In today's video, I'm bringing you guys my personal sword and shield sets. These are primarily made with solo play in mind and sort of a DPS heavy playstyle. Of course, they can also work in a co-op environment, but they won't revolve or bolster any of the Sword and Shield supportive capabilities. I'll be making another video on that here in just a little bit. Or if you really want, you can go and watch my Cold Earth set video, which also has a really good support Sword and Shield set. I'll leave a little card at the top right hand corner of the screen you guys can click to go check that out. At the end of this video, I'll also be announcing the winner of the PS4 and Xbox membership giveaway, so make sure you stay tuned. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. As per tradition, the first set I'm going to be showing you guys is an Elementless set, a word of warning, a lot of the sets in this video are going to feature Kul Taroth weapons, so I will include builds uh, in case you don't have those weapons, so don't worry. But in this case, we're going to be using the Kul Taroth Slicer Mud. This is the highest raw elementless sword and shield in the game. It also has negative 10% affinity, 1 level 1 jewel slot, plus 25 defense, and 2 augment slots. In the jewel slot, I opted for an attack jewel, and for the augments, I went with an affinity increase to completely negate that negative affinity, and I also put an attack increase. However, this set does have the Nergigante set bonus, so if you want to opt for a health region augment here, it would actually be ideal. So if you really like that kind of thing, go for it. For the armor, we're going to be using the Nergigante helmet. It doesn't matter if it's alpha or beta, just use alpha if you don't have two spare attack jewels. The chest is the Dobermail beta slotted with a critical jewel. The gauntlet of the Kaiser Vanbreeze is beta slotted with a sharp jewel. The coil is the Nergigante coil beta slotted with another critical jewel. The boots are the Nergigante greaves slotted with a final critical jewel. And the charm is the exploiter charm 2. As a whole, this would give you level 7 attack boost, level 3 crit boost, max out weakness exploit, maxed out maximum might, and protective polish. Even though we don't have white sharpness on this, protective polish will make your blue sharpness last a lot more, and with wetfish fins you can sharpen this thing super quick, and of course, since you're using sword and shield, you don't have to sheath your weapon to sharp, so it's not really that big of a hindrance, and I really like protective polish on sword and shield because of that. This is actually my personal favorite uh, sword and shield set, it's what I use for pretty much everything. I think the only monster I don't take this into is Valhazak and the Karen. It's not really bad against them either. I just prefer having Effluvium Resist versus Val, and I like having Sleep on Karen. So if you're looking for a sweaty endgame Chad Blows Tyrannus set for the Sword and Shield, this should be your go-to. I highly recommend this set. The second set I have for you guys is a Dragon Element set. This one uses the Devil Joe SNS, the Fatal Bite. This thing is tied to the Tarith Slicer Mud for the highest raw base damage. It also has negative 20% affinity, high dragon damage, high Elder Seal, no jewel slots, and two augment slots. For the augments, I went with an attack increase and an affinity increase to help negate some of that negative affinity. For the helm, we're going to be using the Nergigante Helm again. Doesn't matter which, use the Alpha if you don't have spare attack jewels. The chest is the Kul Turoth's Ire Alpha, slotted with one attack jewel. The gauntlet to the Kaiser Van Brace's beta slotted with a sharp jewel. The coil is the Nergigante coil beta slotted with a mighty jewel. The boots are Dante's leather boots slotted with two dragon jewels. And the charm is the Handicraft Charm 3. Now as a whole, this would give you level 5 attack boost, max out weakness exploit, level 3 handicraft, level 2 stun resist, dragon attack, and critical boost, and protective polish. Now in this one, we do have white sharpness, a decent chunk of it as well. So keeping your sharpness up on this one is actually quite worth your time and investment. There's not really a whole much else to say here. Uh, this set deals a lot of damage. Damage, the negative affinity is pretty negligible, and the Elder Seal helps. The third set I have for you guys is a Blast set. Now this one is a bit more unorthodox. For this one we're going to be using the Tarith Slicer Blast. This thing has natural white sharpness, 0% affinity, 390 blast, a level 3 jewel slot, plus 20 defense, and 1 augment slot. For the augment I went with a slot upgrade and filled the jewel slots with a tenderizer jewel and a blast jewel. If you do not have this then just use this set with the Paolumu Sword and Shield, the Lumu Tab R3. For the armor we're going to be using the Nergigante Helm Alpha slotted with an expert jewel. Jewel. The chest is going to be the Zora Hide Beta slotted with a sharp jewel. The gauntlets are the Zora Claws Beta slotted with an attack jewel. The coil is the Zora Spine Beta slotted with a mighty jewel. The boots are the Kirin Leg Guards Beta slotted with two more attack jewels. And the charm is the Exploiter Charm 2. As a whole, this would give you level 4 attack boost, level 3 blast attack, maxed out free element, maxed out weakest exploit, level 3 maximum might, a spare level of critical light and fortify, protective polish, and most importantly, we get the Zora set bonus 
critical status. Since this thing has natural white sharpness, we don't need handicraft at all. You can simply just use protective polish and you can keep your white sharpness the whole time. And you attack so fast with sword and shield, you'll be applying all that 390 blast we released with free element a lot. You have really high crit, which means your blast damage crits, which means it will build up faster, which means it will deal more damage when it blows up and it'll blow up more often. You don't rely on landing those jumping slam attacks that do a lot of damage. You can just proc blast like 20 times at a monster's face by stabbing it repeatedly. This is a kind of a strange set, but it's a hell of a lot of fun and the playstyle is pretty safe. It may not be the end-all sweat mode set, but it works and it's super fun and I highly recommend it. And one of the last two sets I have for you guys is a fire element set. This is not the set I meant earlier when I mentioned Valhazak. Uh, that's for another video. Uh, but this is a really good set just because Sword and Shield is great for elemental damage. For this one, we're going to be using the Terrath Slicer King. This thing has 30% affinity at base, 180 fire, plus 20 defense, and two augment slots. For the augment slots, I went with an affinity increase and an attack increase. For the helm, we're going to be using the Wrath Soul Helm Beta, slotted with two attack jewels. The chest is the Kul Terrath Ire Beta, slotted with a handicraft jewel and an attack jewel. The gauntlets are the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, slotted with a critical jewel. The coil is the Azure Starloy Tassets, slotted with with a sharp jewel. The boots are the Dante's Leather Boots, slotted with one more attack jewel and one blaze jewel. And the charm we're going to be using is the Handicraft Charm 3. As a whole, this would give you level 5 Handicraft, level 4 Attack Boost, level 3 Crit Boost, Max Out Weakness Exploit, 2 levels of Stun Resist, 1 level of Fire Attack, which is where this weapon caps out anyways, Protective Polish, and most importantly, the Wrath of Set Bonus, Critical Element. Now, some may ask me why I would use this over the Anjanath Terrath weapon. Uh, and in reality, I tried. I tried really hard, but honestly, the crit, the hike crit chance on this makes it a much more consistent weapon. I found I killed monsters a lot quicker with this than with the Anja uh, because you do have to make up for that negative affinity that it does have. With this you will have 95% crit chance when you hit a weak spot and because your crit is so high we have crit boost to increase our damage and you'll be progging critical element every single hit and that's where the increased DPS comes from and this is where it out damages the Anja just because the sword and shield hits so fast but by no means is the Anja a bad weapon, uh, and if you have it, you can go with a similar build to this one. The differences are negligible, and if I'm being completely honest, uh, it doesn't really matter all that much anyway, so feel free to use whichever one you prefer. Now, if you don't have the Terrath King or the USJ armor, use this set instead. It uses the Corona SNS, and it comes really close to matching the damage. This is what I was using before, and uh, it's a pretty popular weapon. It looks really cool, it's really strong, uh, so I really think it'll work well for you too. Hey! And the final set I have for you guys is similar, but it's for Thunder, the element everything is weak to. For this one, we're going to be using the Terrath Slicer Myth. This thing has 0% affinity, 360 thunder, plus 20 defense, and 2 augment slots. For the augments, I went with an affinity increase and an attack increase, but a slot upgrade will work fine too. For the helm, we're going to be using the Wrath Soul Helm Beta, slotted with 2 attack jewels. The chest is the Azure Star Lord Armor, slotted with a critical jewel. The gauntlets are the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, slotted with a sharp jewel. The coil is the Kadachi Coil, slotted with 2 bolt jewels. The boots are the Death Stench Heal Beta, slotted with 2 more attack jewels, and the charm is the Exploder Charm 2. As a whole, this would give you level 4 attack boost, level 3 thunder attack, level 3 weakness exploit, level 3 handicraft, 2 levels of critical boost, and protective polish. Of course, we also get the Rathalos set bonus, critical element. Now we don't have as much crit as with the fire set, but we have way higher thunder damage to compensate, and of course, versatility, because freaking everything in this game is weak to thunder, so you'll be able to take this set into more places than you will the fire set. If you don't have the KT weapon or the USJ armor, try this set in Instead, it works really well, and it's basically the vanilla version of the set as a whole. Well guys, those are my Sword and Shield sets. Like I said, these are mainly for solo play and are focused around a DPS-heavy playstyle. I also want to apologize for not uploading as frequently. I have been super busy with school. I just finished week one of finals. Uh, week two is about to begin, so once this week is over, I'll be able to upload a lot more frequently for you guys, so stay tuned. A quick PSA as well for any of you guys that don't have any of the Cold Terrath weapons I mentioned in this video. She's coming back. May 25th, so mark the calendar, uh, so if you didn't get any of the weapons that you wanted last time around, now you have another chance. I still am missing the Horn Charge Blade, the only weapon I wanted literally out of the whole event, I didn't get it after 800 weapons. If you have any suggestions or comments about any of the builds, as always, leave a comment down below. But most importantly, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you want to see on the channel? More builds, a uh, list of my favorite weapons, or maybe content from other games? Please let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see. Now, before I end the video, I want to congratulate Emmanuel Ortiz for winning the PS4 giveaway, and T. Cruzen for life 
for winning the Xbox giveaway. I want to thank all of you guys who commented and participated. And finally, I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Thank you.